This is Dollar Shave Club. Our blades are f***ing great. It's a subscription service that ships razors to customers for just a few bucks per month. The company was founded in 2011 when Michael Dubin and Mark Levine were trying to figure out how to sell a warehouse full of 250,000 razors. In 2012, for less than $5,000, Dubin created the now famous ad that allowed them to sell the entire inventory in less than one day. So gentle, a toddler could use it. Fast forward to 2016, and the company is acquired by Unilever for $1 billion. So how'd they do it, and what can we learn from them about marketing? Without a doubt, the most important and impressive component of Dollar Shave Club's marketing strategy is establishing a clear and relatable why, or purpose. This is built around two things the company believes to be true. Number one, that razors are expensive, and number two, that the previous razor buying experience was difficult and unpleasant. You have to go to the store and browse through the different aisles and products with unclear names like Mock This and Extreme That. They're locked behind that display case, and you have to ask an employee to unlock it for you. And oftentimes the employees are not very enthusiastic to help you and they're not trained on the products. Overall, it's not an experience that you look forward to and it makes buying razors painful. People make decisions based on logic, but also based on how they feel. So communicating this painful experience was important for Dollar Shave Club because it's relatable to their audience. In addition to the product being affordable and convenient, which it is, the company's purpose was built around a really strong why that their customers could buy into. So let's take a look at some examples of this. In 2012, Dubin created the company's first ad campaign that quickly became a viral hit. The video, which currently has more than 27 million views on YouTube, was produced for less than $5,000 and reportedly helped Dubin sell all of his initial 250,000 units of razors overnight. This ad communicates the product's key value proposition about it being less expensive, and it also pokes fun at how unnecessarily extravagant the competitor razor brands are. However, Dubin has said himself that this ad's success was mainly driven by humor being used simply for humor's sake. I think the company's next ad campaign was where they really hit their stride and demonstrate a perfect balance between humor and persuasion. The reason for this is because they do a better job at communicating the company's why that customers can really relate to, while still using humor as a tool to hold attention. For example, notice how the following ad communicates the frustration of having razor blades locked inside of a display case, as well as the unhelpful nature of the retail employee, both of which are highly relatable moments or experiences customers have when buying razors. Excuse me, do you have the keys for the razor case? No. Can anyone help me get some razors? No. It's kind of like they don't want you to buy razors. DollarShaveClub.com delivers amazing razors for just a few bucks. There's a really great quote from Jay Abraham that goes, when you describe your audience's problem to them better than they can describe it themselves, they automatically think you have the solution. So not only does this ad draw the audience's attention with the use of humor, but the painfully relatable experiences cause them to buy into Dollar Shave Club's why, which increases the likelihood they become a customer, not just because the product is less expensive, but because they agree with the company's purpose. In 2019, Dollar Shave Club launched another ad campaign using the same concept, but they take it to another level by showcasing a bunch of uncomfortable and embarrassing things that guys do when they get ready in the morning. Again, the campaign uses quite a bit of humor, but it's the focus on hyper-specific and relatable moments that make customers feel like the company understands them. And by this point in the company's history, they've evolved from just a shaving company to a complete grooming solution, which includes creams, oils, and wipes. So their product line and positioning has changed a bit, but their approach to marketing remains the same. From a marketing standpoint, there's a lot that can be learned by looking at the evolution of Dollar Shave Club's website over time. In 2011, when the company was founded, you can already see evidence of them communicating their why. And they also have a very clear and irresistible offer. And here's something that I find interesting about that. This isn't just a good product with a limited time offer. The whole company's purpose is built around being a great offer, which makes the marketing a lot easier. So I understand that not every company can be the least expensive option in their marketplace like Dollar Shave Club is, but every company can position their purpose in a desirable way. Most companies simply choose not to. In 2012, they start using an interesting tactic where you can earn a free month for every friend that you sign up. It's well understood that word of mouth is one of the best ways to accelerate a company's growth. 
And I think there's two reasons that this particular tactic was successful for Dollar Shave Club. Number one, because there's a high perceived value to the person referring their friends. A free month of product feels more valuable than simply saying that you're gonna save $1. And number two, the company's strong value proposition makes it something that's worth sharing with friends. Their customers feel like the hero by sharing this great company and story with others. It gives them a sense of validation that they discovered this great thing. 2012 is also when they start expanding their product line. They introduce two new expensive razors that can be upsold to customers for a pretty reasonable price still. However, they still have their attractive $1 razor to get people in the door, which as we'll learn is a strategy they have evolved, but they still use to this day. In 2013, the website doesn't change much other than adding a social proof bar. Notice the on-brand messaging where they say shaving the people at. Jump ahead to 2015 and the company receives $75 million in Series D funding. And as a result, we notice a bit of an upgrade to the general design of the website, as well as some high quality product photography. But the messaging remains mostly unchanged. In 2016, something big happens. Dollar Shave Club is acquired by Unilever for $1 billion. That acquisition likely caused more people to contribute to how the company markets itself. The noticeable changes I observed are a greater emphasis on the $1 unique selling proposition. And that's being highlighted more prominently on the homepage, as we can see here. Also, this is the first time I noticed the $1 offer being used as a tripwire as opposed to a primary revenue stream. What I mean is that people now opt in to receive a $1 razor with free shipping, but are then automatically added to a subscription plan for as little as $3 per month. I'm almost certain that the $3 subscription would have increased the average monthly revenue per customer, but also increased the average retention rate, which has a doubling effect on the company's top line revenue. You'll also notice the landing page does a great job at communicating the ease of the process and uses FAQs to handle any objections customers might have. In 2017, a year after being acquired, Dollar Shave Club moves from their $1 offer and increases it to $5 per month up front with a $9 recurring subscription. Some of this might have to do with increasing product costs, but also likely because they learned that their customers were still happy and willing to pay a couple extra bucks per month. Today, the Tripwire offer remains at $5 up front, but has increased to $37.50 every two months after that, and it includes an entire grooming kit as opposed to just razors. Facebook ads have now become an important platform for the company's growth, so let's take a look at what they're doing here. At the moment, they have about 80 active ads and two primary landing pages in market that appear to be direct sales campaigns, meaning they're likely using a conversion marketing objective optimized for sales. I imagine a lot of these ads are running cold traffic into them, likely with the use of lookalike audiences derived from high value customers and possibly website visitors as well. So these are often the highest converting and most profitable cold audiences you can use with Facebook ads and are most effective when you have a substantial amount of customers, which Dollar Shave Club has by this point. I would guess that they do quite a bit of retargeting as well, considering they've established a substantial product awareness and have probably quite a few website visitors per month. Their ad copy is very much focused on their value proposition of being one of the lowest priced razors on the market. Most, if not all of the ads mention the $5 tripwire offer that has likely proven to convert well over time. The ad creative is very well done as well. They use very high quality product photos, which stand out to me simply due to the quality of the media, but they also use a lot of video content in the form of testimonials and product demonstrations as well. One observation is that the video ads do an excellent job at quickly communicating what the product is for those who don't know and how to use it. It seems like an obvious point to make, but many companies struggle to clearly communicate their product in ads. They try to get too fancy and end up causing confusion with their customers. So I think Dollar Shave Club's brand awareness and strong tripwire offer really drive a lot of the attention to these ads. And then the ad creative really just needs to play a supporting role by making it clear what the product is. Also, all of the video ads use subtitles, which makes it suitable for people without audio. Again, this is a subtle point, but even if a small percentage of your audience is not using audio, they may choose to skip over the ad altogether, which tells Facebook they're not interested in it, which could be the difference in Facebook choosing to serve a Dollar Shave Club ad versus a competitor. It's really about optimizing your ads to the nth degree so that you can gain any kind of advantage over your competition. I think the landing pages are designed well too, Every space seems to serve a purpose. There's no wasted space. 
but they're also not overcrowded with information. It seems like they've stripped it down to the essential information that's necessary to produce a conversion. The pages have a very strong ad scent, meaning the design, look, feel, and color matches the ads that people are clicking on from. And this creates a consistent customer experience from start to finish. And this is even more important when you consider that the company's purpose is built around improving the razor shopping experience. So this needs to and does hold true for their digital funnel as well. The page has a very clear call to action. It's clear and obvious what action you need to take and where to click. I like the use of a testimonial that highlights both a benefit and pain point. And these three points are designed to produce a potential customer's fear of making a bad choice. Those fears being that their product is being shipped too frequently to them, that they can't change their order later on, or that they will forget about their subscription altogether. They're trying to eliminate any reason for the customer not to buy by addressing their concerns up front. And lastly, they provide very clear expectations and end with FAQs again to address other common objections their customers are likely to have. So there are three main lessons I take away from Dollar Shave Club's marketing strategy. Number one is to make incremental, not drastic changes. So we saw how their core messaging didn't really change much over the years. And if it did, it was through incremental changes instead of massive rebrands. Drastic changes cause you to start from scratch, but small changes allow you to evolve and become a little bit better each time while maintaining an opportunity to revert back if it doesn't work. Number two is to understand relatable customer experiences. Dollar Shave Club is proof that your brand story and purpose can be a useful marketing tool, but that starts with deeply understanding specific moments your customers are likely experiencing. Number three is to double down on your unique value proposition. Dollar Shave Club's value proposition is low prices, and they've been milking that angle for almost a decade now and are still having success with it. So understand what makes you unique and make sure that you're communicating it. If you enjoyed this video, I think you're going to love our video about Apple's marketing strategy and how they've become one of the most powerful and cult-like followings on the planet. And don't forget to subscribe.